Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're going to be doing a Sniper Sunday. It's been a while since I've done one of these shows, but we've got some brand new sniper rifles and a brand new Battlefield game. Now the rifle I'll be focusing on today, which subsequently dictates the playstyle, is the Gewehr 98. This is a very cool German sniper rifle. Out of the three sniper rifles available, it's my favorite, particularly because it is the best at extreme long-range sniping. And you might be thinking, well, obviously it's good at long-range sniping, Aren't they all good at long-range sniping their sniper rifles? Well, some of them actually aren't really designed for long-range sniping. Some of them are designed for medium range. And then the other ones with magnified optics are good at long-range sniping, but this one has the best sweet spot for extreme long-range sniping. And it also has the best muzzle velocity, which is excellent for hitting long-range targets that are on the move. It means less lead time. Now, to give you some perspective here, the fastest muzzle velocity out of any bolt-action rifle in Battlefield 4 is 670 meters per second. This rifle shoots 880 meters per second, over 200 meters per second faster than the fastest rifle in Battlefield 4. The devs said that they were going to increase muzzle velocity on a bunch of weapons to make the game feel a bit more impactful, and this is definitely one of the weapons they were talking about. Now, just because it has a faster muzzle velocity doesn't mean it's going to be universally better than any sniper rifle in Battlefield 4. There's another parameter on bullet physics in Battlefield 1, and that is bullet drag. The longer the bullet has been flying through the air, the slower it's going to go because of air resistance. And so that's something that comes into play when taking shot at extreme long-range targets. And this is basically designed to try and stop uh, the extreme, extreme long-range marksman sniping or make it so difficult that people aren't going to spend all round trying to snipe people from 2,000 or 3,000 meters. And like most bolt-action rifles, this one gives you a guaranteed one-shot headshot kill at any distance. However, at the sweet spot, you can body shot for a kill as well. And I believe the sweet spot is somewhere between 80 and 125 meters. It can be a little bit tricky to figure out what that distance is as there are meter markings on flags, but they usually only show when your like screen is not looking directly at them and the flag is like being highlighted because it's being captured or whatever like that. So the distance markers aren't yet as prevalent in the alpha. I'm hoping that some more information comes up by the time the game comes out. And that way snipers will be able to get a better read on how far away they are from certain targets so that they can better estimate for their sweet spot kills. This mechanic is going to add an extra depth of map knowledge to perfecting your sniper gameplay because if you learn that like point A and point B are exactly at the sweet spot distance of a particular rifle, you'll know like, hey, I want to fight from this point to that point. I should spawn with this rifle and it'll give me a lot of sweet spot kills. It is difficult to try and anticipate that combat and anticipating the, the distance that you're going to run into people is very difficult. But if you sort of keep your distance from a point and you're just like, I'm just going to snipe people on this flag all day, then you can kind of hone in your sweet spot. And for the most part, you should be able to get one shot body shot kills. It's something that's going to take a lot of practice and map knowledge over time. But uh, I imagine once this game's been out for a while, people will start to figure out the good sweet spots and figure out the nice little sniper nooks. Now, when it comes to customizing weapons, there is going to be a tab for that in Battlefield 1. We don't yet know how much customization is going to be in the game. Uh, the way this rifle is currently outfitted, it has a bipod on the front and a side mounted scope. You can get a different kind of Gewehr 98 with a sharpshooter scope that I believe doesn't have any magnification. It just has sort of a cross on it. Um, and that's just sort of player preference, really. I don't know how much of a difference there is between those two versions of the Gewehr 98. Whether or not you'll be able to take a bat bipod off the weapon or not um, is unclear at this point. Weapon skins, however, will be in the game, so we can almost certainly expect to see that in the weapon customization tab. Now, the Gewehr 98 can hold five rounds at a time. You don't get an extra by firing around and then reloading. Uh, basically, you reload the shots individually, or if you shoot off all five rounds, you'll reload all five rounds quickly with a clip. So, in fact, it's actually a bit faster to reload five rounds than it is four rounds. So keep that in mind if you have one shot left uh, and you decide not to take a shot, it might have been more worthwhile just to take that last shot at your opponent and then do the five shot reload. I love that sort of uh, realistic element to it and it adds a little bit to the meta game there where a, an experienced sniper might know this and go for the shorter reload by firing all five shots. Now if you're watching closely there you'll notice I just lit myself on fire. I tried to shoot a flare out of the roof of this broken house but there was an invisible wall there and 
the flare came back down on me and caught me on fire. So flares can be used to spot enemies. You can shoot it up in the air. It'll spot people within a certain radius of it. I believe that's how it works. So we'll have to get more data on that later. But uh, you can also catch people on fire with it. So you could use it as a weapon if you want. I wouldn't suggest it as like your primary weapon, but sort of last ditch effort. If somebody surprises you while you're about to shoot a flare, you can shoot them with it. Or you could shoot it at the entrance of a house and have somebody catch on fire as they come in the doorway. Unfortunately, the scout class only gets one flare. I feel like this is probably a game design error. They just typed in the wrong number and their balancing classes. I think the scout class will probably end up with something like three or maybe even four flares. Uh, they're incredibly useful and fun, much like a motion sensor ball from Battlefield 4. Now the sniper class has become incredibly effective in Battlefield 1 because the bolt action rifles really haven't seen a nerf. In fact, in many ways, they've gotten stronger, faster muzzle velocity, still one shot headshot kills, and a sweet spot. Not to mention a lot of weapons are generally speaking less effective than they used to be. So it makes uh, their sidearms very, very effective at engaging infantry. I absolutely love the 1911. Yeah, it's not gonna take on like an SMG in close quarters in terms of damage output, but if you're good with it, you can certainly take out a mediocre player with your sidearm. I love them. They're absolutely great for follow-up shots. And the 1911 for the most part has the same damage model as it did in Battlefield 4. So all things considered, Considered the sidearms and the 1911 in particular got an incredible buff considering that most other weapons got a bit of a nerf. And at least at the moment, I can certainly get behind this change. I did enjoy sniping in Battlefield 4, but I recognize that it just wasn't the most effective strategy uh, on the majority of the maps. But now you can actually really play the Scout class quite effectively, at least on Scar. And it makes the Scout class just so incredibly effective. It'll be interesting to see how effective this class is on some of the more urban maps. But then again, it also has bolt action rifles that are designed for medium range combat, uh, where the sweet spot can kill somebody at like 40 to 50 meters with a body shot, which is kind of cool. Now we already know that there's gonna be significantly more gadgets for the other classes out there. We're getting a mortar, which I believe is going to support and then dynamite which I think is going to assault although maybe they'll give it to another class as well we don't know what's coming to the scout class um, I would love to see dynamite for the scout class it would also be pretty cool to have something like binoculars that could call in artillery strikes like in battlefield bad company 2 that was one of my favorite things about the recon class in that game was being able to call in an artillery strike on like a tank that was just sniping from across the map and not moving you're like hey I'll teach you to sort of sit in the backfields and snipe and not move and you just drop an artillery strike and take him out from long range. It was always really fun when you got those kills and I never felt like it was overpowered because the enemy team got warned on the minimap that an artillery strike was coming in on their location and they could avoid it if they were paying attention and that was sort of the thing there to sort of uh, separate the good players from the bad. A good player would know the strike was coming or you could wait until they were engaged in really intense combat or something like that and then call in the strike strike hoping that they'd be distracted and then get blown up by the artillery. Now another thing that actually makes sniping considerably easier in Battlefield 1 compared to Battlefield 4 is the way that scopes are rendered. In Battlefield 4 you would actually get a black screen all around the targeting reticle so there would just be a circle in the center of the screen of what you could see and then everything else would be black making it very hard to track targets or sort of notice outside targets of what they're doing. Battlefield 1 is now allowing you to scope in but also see what's surrounding the scope. They just blur it out a bit. I'm certainly a big fan of this change and it gives snipers a little bit less of a case of tunnel vision. Now there is also a way to switch to your iron sights when you have a side mounted scope as I do on this weapon. However, I don't know what it is and it seems to be sort of glitched out right now where you can activate it by accident and then nobody knows how to switch back to it. But if all bolt action rifles with side mounted scopes give you the option to also use the iron sights as well without it being like an additional attachment that's kind of cool and it will just give you an added option if you really don't want to use your zoom scope for close quarter combat you don't have to and then of course as mentioned in previous videos the sniper glint is still in the game but only when it's really sunny out a foggy day there's not going to be a glint 
if it's raining outside, also no glint. So in that regard, snipers did get a bit of a buff, and I actually really enjoy sniping on foggy days. It's fun to try and pick out the silhouettes. Anyway, that wraps it up for Sniper Sunday. I hope to be doing a lot more of these because sniping is so much fun in Battlefield 1. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.